Hey, there's an incredible sight in the sky, and you can see it beginning tonight. A rare comet makes its debut in the northern hemisphere, visible to the naked eye. It will give you the best view you could have in years. In fact, some astronomers are calling 2013 the year of the comet, as they identify more and more of these snowballs flying through space. Does it, though, raise questions about our safety here on Earth? Dr. Derek Pitts is chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute Planetarium. Dr. Pitts, you know, we saw just a couple of weeks ago, mid-February the 15th, that, uh, that meteorite that came crashing to Earth over Russia scared so many people, hurt a bunch of people, broke windows. Now we've got this comet coming nearby. Are we seeing more of this space activity, or are we just getting better at finding it? Well, I think you're right on account number two. We're getting better at finding it, and we're getting better at seeing it, obviously, from what we saw that asteroid last month. So many people had dashboard cams that gave us great views. So it is more so that we're getting better at identifying these things and letting people know about it. We have such a great network of communication these days. So a comet is mostly ice and gas, right? Is it, if, if one were to hit the Earth, would there be the kind of impact that we saw from that asteroid? Well, it could be devastating if one did hit the Earth. Even though they are made of gas, they are also bound up with rock and dust and dirt. And the velocity at which they travel could be a problem for us because they have a lot of energy to dissipate. So it's not so much the mass of the comet. It is a rather low mass, but it's the velocity that would give us the force that would cause a lot of damage. We don't really have very much history, though, of comets crashing into the planet, though. 35 miles a second is what I hear this thing is flying at. I'm told that Mars might actually be in a little bit of danger from this thing. There is a very slight possibility that this thing could impact Mars. Yes, that would be on its next go-round, actually. So um, it isn't really something that we should be concerned about. You know, there are these close passages among the planets of these other objects, these smaller solar system bodies, like comets and asteroids and such. But we're becoming good enough at predicting their orbital paths to know when they really are going to hit and when it's just going to be a close pass. And so far, the one for Mars looks like it's just a close pass. No reason for any concern there. We have a, a graphic that shows how this thing will be seen rising in the night sky uh, starting on, well, on March 7th. Uh, it is visible now in the uh, northern hemisphere. Where should people look and when should they look if they want to catch, catch a view of it? Well, the comet's going to be visible over on the western side of the sky in the evening, about 30 minutes after sunset, so that makes it convenient, just as the sky is getting dark. The difficulty will be uh, spotting it. It will appear as a brightish object, sort of a fuzzy ball, if you will, over on the western side. And one of the best things to do is to look for it over the weekend, as the sky clears up for many of us. And then next week, on Tuesday, it will be just to the left of a thin crescent moon, and it will be just about at its brightest. So that'll be a good time to look for it then. Uh, with binoculars, that'll be a great help also. All right, looks like kind of a bat badminton shuttlecock in the sky there out in the west. <laughs> Dr. Derek Pitts, always good to have you on. Thanks for the uh, information. Thank you very much, John. My pleasure. See you soon.